All right, let's review The Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 7. It's still crazy to me that only one day has passed since the first episode with the quarry, and, and just all this has happened. Seven episodes have passed, and we're still on just getting past one day. And I actually didn't want to believe it until the showrunner said it, and I just... That's crazy. And I just want to get the whole Glenn thing out of the way. I'm actually really happy that they showed us in the beginning of the episode versus the end that Glenn is alive and the fact that they didn't drag it out for a lot more episodes. That was very cool on their part. A lot of shows end up showing that sort of stuff at the end to kind of drag you in, but they showed it right in the beginning and I give them props for that. I'm also extremely happy that Glenn is alive. I do not want anyone to think that I was pro Glenn being dead. But I want you to look me into the eyes and tell me that Glenn making it under the dumpster, slowly crawling and not being bit by a single walker anywhere on his body, and the fact that how he fell made it so his head was closer to the dumpster was not total and utter bullshit. Watch how he fell with Nicholas. There is no way he landed with his head closer to the dumpster. I'm happy Glenn is alive. I'm not complaining he's alive, but that, that just wasn't good. And this really reminds me of what I mentioned last week about editing on The Walking Dead and that this has been a little bit of a problem lately that I've noticed. I don't know if it actually happened in earlier seasons. I've just been really noticing it lately. And an example is last season with the van fall with Carol and how the van ended up landing upright where physics says no it should have landed on top of its roof and it didn't and they actually released the clip of it on edited and it showed that it actually did land on the roof because again physics so i feel like this is one of those moments where how they fell and where glenn was positioned just it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. It didn't make sense that he was able to slowly crawl under the dumpster and the walkers weren't going at him or trying to bite him. Even the ones we saw walkers surround him on either sides that weren't necessarily getting to Nicholas's body. It just, it, it didn't make sense. And then on top of that, when he's under and the walkers are then coming after him, I, he gets under the dumpster and then the walkers start coming after him, trying to bite at him and he kills them. And then it seems like the walkers just give up and quickly after that, they walk away. And we are told over and over again, if there is a tiny noise, zombies are attracted to it. The walkers are attracted to it. And if another zombie walker, whatever, sees him, it'll be attracted to it. That walker doesn't even have to hear the noise. It just sees, hey, my buddy over here is scraping against this window or this door. He must have saw something. And it's just a herd mentality and they start going and clumping together and then more and more and more. And that should have happened here, especially since Glenn was making noises. He was breathing heavily. He threw his bottle down at one point. That may have been after they left. They should have been surrounding him more and I don't know if we were led to believe that he killed them and that it created a barrier around the dumpster but then why could he see out to Nicholas and why weren't them you know they're eating down here and they hear a noise and they turn and they see Glenn in the angle of his body it just the angle the editing all of that didn't make sense that out of the way I'm happy Glenn is alive I am very happy to see him there's this saying I hated as a teenager, bakers can't be choosers, so I will just shut up and be happy that Glenn is alive. If you thought this dumpster scene was amazing and awesome and the editing was so cool, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying that it's bad that you were excited about it or thought it was cool. That is absolutely fine. It's just from my perspective, I didn't like it. I thought it was poorly done. They could have angled things a lot better. But if you thought it was a great scene and you thought it was super awesome, then that is totally cool and I am happy for you. I was actually really surprised to see Enid and while some other characters would have just let her go, I'm happy Glenn was true to the person he's trying to be and brought her back. If you watch The Talking Dead, Glenn's actor said that Glenn is trying very hard to maintain the person he is so that others can live in a, a better society. Glenn's actor also believes going back for Enid for Maggie is part of that. Then, of course, he started doing it for himself. Glenn's actor also did confirm Glenn knows about the pregnancy, as we suspected a long time ago. This episode had a lot of great moments back at Alexandria. By far my favorite was Rick being a total dick to Gabriel. Gabriel is putting up his little signs about a prayer circle around the solar panels, and Rick is just going and tearing them down. And the look on Gabriel's face, and I also like when Carl walks 
talks with his dad and goes, Dad, like, come on. Rick just has so much dislike for that man. And then later we see by the solar panels they're having a machete group meeting, which was just so funny. Poor Gabriel, he just, he can't win. I'm really happy about the meeting between Rick Michonne and Morgan and someone telling Morgan what a lot of us have been thinking. It's not as simple as four words. It can't be. And in this conversation, Morgan admits he wants to kill Still, which was so nicely done. He shouldn't just be the Zen master that completely changes. The impulse is there, the desire is there, the nagging at your brain. It's very hard to just stop one day. And I actually could see Rick exiling Morgan if it came to that, but I think that there's too much going on right now, and either Morgan is going to die, although I really don't think this is the right moment for him to die. I think they need to drag this on a little bit more and show the, the difference in philosophy between Carol and Morgan, and I wonder if where they're going is showing that both extremes don't work and you need a middle ground, and maybe they're using those two characters to show it. If they kill Morgan this early, they might take away from what they're trying to... I feel like, show us. But they could very well just kill him, so Rick doesn't have to deal with the whole exiling. But even if Morgan doesn't die, I think Rick is going to have an epiphany very soon about community and working together, so it won't actually lead to him exiling him. Rick right now, yeah. I could see him exiling Morgan. The Rick I think we're going to see pretty soon, I think he's going to be a lot more forgiving. I want to say, Carol gave the worst advice to a child ever. The only thing that keeps you from becoming a monster is killing. You know, maybe you could have added, the only thing that keeps you from becoming a monster is killing the monsters. Just saying killing to a child probably isn't the best idea, and the look on his face and how much they spent focusing between those two on that scene, I wonder if it's actually going to come down to he's going to take that advice and start killing and something bad is going to happen. That just didn't seem like great advice to give to a child. I understand where Carol's coming from, but maybe should have added in a few more words at the, the end of that sentence. And I still think Carol is struggling with what she's done to survive. You could see it on her face when she was talking to the kid. And I really think this is where we're going with Carol and why they put such an emphasis on Morgan being this just zen, peaceful Jedi guy is to contrast the two and actually bring to the surface what Carol has maybe been feeling deep down inside but hasn't admitted to or maybe now is just realizing. She went from two extremes. She went from a docile woman that was abused to Rambo woman. And both of those extremes aren't who she really wants to be, perhaps. She needs to find that, that middle ground, and Morgan needs to find that middle ground too, and I think those characters are actually doing a great job of contrasting off of each other and bringing those points to, to the front and letting us see how both extremes maybe aren't for the best. Ron, Ron is a sneaky bastard. I knew that he was up to something for a while, especially when he went up to Rick and went, hey, how about you show me how to shoot? So it's not surprising to me that Ron then went and got bullets and was planning on shooting Carl. But he didn't get a chance because the herd broke through the wall. So now I'm wondering if he's going to accidentally shoot him during the herd flooding into Alexandria. So he wanted to shoot him, but the walkers come in, he's distracted by them, he freaks out shooting and accidentally hits Carl. If Ron accidentally shoots Carl or even actually shoots him on purpose during the herd flooding in, th that is going to be the end for Ron. Rick will end his life, I have no doubt about that, if the walkers don't get to Ron first. Spencer, everyone was saying, even the show creators, that Spencer was trying to help, but I still can't get it out of my head that he was being a coward. I think I'm too influenced by other mediums with that, though. It was a stupid idea, but Spencer was right. Rick probably wouldn't have listened to his plan. I did thoroughly enjoy Tara helping Spencer and then Rick yelling at her for helping, saying, you already almost died once for these people, what the hell were you doing? And then she flicks him off. That was just beautiful. That is actually right up there with the ripping down Father Gabriel's signs. Which led to Rick apologizing and Tara explaining that's how it works with us. We're in it together. And the look of confusion on Rick's face, he still just doesn't get it. And I said this earlier, I hope Rick will have this epiphany that they need each other and I think that's coming soon. They've been building up to it. 
Rick's coldness towards the Alexandrians, his willingness to sacrifice them for his own people, not understanding why his own people risked their neck for them, even the conversation between Deanna and Rick, why did you save him? Because he's your son. Wrong answer. Something is going to happen soon, and Rick is going to realize they are right. They need each other, and all need to be sticking out for each other. And then the wall comes down via the tower. That was a huge twist. The bleeding wall was a total red herring. I had expected that from there it was going to show the wall weakening, and then it was going to open a gap, and then we were going to have that steady stream of walkers. But nope, we went for full some panels down, herd comes streaming in, which is going to make the mid-season finale super exciting. Final thoughts. I love the moment when Maggie tells Rick Judith is starting to look like Lori, but not you, because, you know, your wife was totally banging another dude. And it kind of seemed like Carl was antagonizing Ron a bit during gun practice. There was just this little bit of edge. It could have been poor acting, but I'd like to think Carl was poking at him just a bit. And honestly, thumbs up on awesome dialogue this episode. They nailed the dialogue this episode. What were your thoughts? Did you like how Glenn survived? Do you think Ron is going to either accidentally or on purpose shoot Carl? And how quickly do you think Ron will be killed by Rick if that happens, if Ron actually lives long enough in the herd invasion? So make sure you come back every week for Walking Dead reviews, comics versus show when we have enough material. Besides that, we have Star Wars videos, Game of Thrones history, and comic videos.